Everybody welcome back. I'm Yumble, and today I intend to tackle the double trumpet interchange. This is a big one. This was uh, one of the harder interchanges that I've had to do, oddly enough. It's simple in theory, very complex in practice. The result is, uh, it speaks for itself, honestly. I, I think it's one of the most beautiful interchanges that you can possibly build. Everyone, thank you for being here. Let's build the double trumpet. Here we have an example of a trumpet interchange. It is a three-legged interchange, meaning it's connecting three directions of highway, and it is completely free-flowing. So there is, a, there is a lane for everybody, and everybody has a lane, and traffic does not have to uh, make a left turn crossing over any of their buddies. So that's great. Imagine we wanted to connect two highways with this, though. What you could do is make what's called a double trumpet. So here I've actually used move it to copy the trumpet and paste it over here. Uh, this, this type of design is really great when you have two highways that are going past one another, but you want them to connect to one another as well, making it into a one, two, three, four way intersection effectively. A lot of places will use this little extra road in the middle, which isn't really its own highway. It's just a connector between the two, but oftentimes uh, people will choose to put a toll booth. <laughs> I'm not going to do it today, but we, we totally could if we wanted to. Um, slap a toll booth in here and, and get some credit for the cars going on and off the toll road. Today, what I'd like to do is actually take this, this design and consolidate it, imagining that the highways were perpendicular to one another instead of uh, glancing off of one another in, in this example here. Let's see if we can't move these closer to one another and make something a little more uh, beautiful. I want to say up front that I found this one deceptively tricky, I would call it. The double trumpet seems simple and elegant, and it sort of is, but I found uh, making a design that I was happy with that made sense was rather difficult. So the first thing that, that I'm doing here is I'm refining our three-lane highway down to two lanes using the mass transit two-lane highway. Very useful roads. If you haven't got the Mass Transit DLC, I would strongly recommend it. And I'm going to start with an 8 meter overpass. This is going to be our first road, just going up over the highway. Um, two meters away, uh, excuse me, two units away on either side, so eight units across in total. And the first thing to really decide is, is what the radius of your inner loop is going to be. I'm going to go with seven units, which is somewhere between large and small. I would say... Se uh, yeah, seven units is kind of a, a happy medium in my opinion, AKA 56 meters. So I'm gonna go up by an additional seven units. Your mileage may vary depending on uh, what, what sizes you pick, but the radius of this is gonna be seven units. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna run this around seven units, seven units. I may adjust the slope or the grounding of this later for aesthetic, but seven units is good for me for now. That ramp is pretty bad, so that'll be fixed later. Now the next one is going to be our outer, um, one of our outer loops. This one, I think it gets up upgraded to a two-lane road eventually, so maybe I'll just draw it in two-lane mass transit road. So I'm going to go seven units up, two units away from our original road. So I'm using the road guidelines and snapping pretty effectively on this one. And then I'm going to use the freeform road tool. Come off of this road straight and then find the point where it snaps to two units away from this one. And that'll automatically make a nine unit radius curve. You can always just make a nine unit radius curve on your own too, whatever you want. So now this is actually gonna split off. On the one side, it's gonna go nine units over to our, uh, to the same place the other road went to. And on the other side, it is actually going to split off in the opposite direction. Also nine units, so I'm actually gonna turn off road guidelines for a second, and we're gonna use the curved road tool. Nine units straight out, and then nine units to the right. This first road that I've built is actually backwards. That'll get changed later. Cool. So that gives us the, the opening gambit of our interchange and gives me a bunch of measurements that I'm gonna to need to, uh, to complete this thing. The next move that I'm gonna make is using our original shape here, I'm gonna go up to this turn and we're gonna use road guidelines again, two units away from the original spot once again. 
And this whole time I'm doing eight meters high. Eight meters is a nice kind of medium height. You'll notice that these are fairly thick, so you lose about three or four meters off the thing. So in order to have a substantial enough overpass, I've found eight meters is kind of where I like to be. But starting at this, at this curve, I'm gonna match this one. So I've gone, I'm not sure how to verbally describe what I've done here, but you can kind of see it. Two units away, going back towards the highway. And we're gonna cross the highway here. I believe we'll go to the center point. That looks good. And this one is actually our opposing loop. So I'm going to, this same loop that we have on this side, I'm gonna do with this one. Our starting loop, that is. So that means seven units up, and then a seven unit radius curve the whole way around. And back to ground, using guides the whole way. Excellent. Both of these can actually swoop off in the opposite direction as well, but maybe I'll take care of that in just a moment. Oh, that'll be the next road, just kidding. I'm just gonna replicate what I've done on this side now. So two unit road, eight meters high, uh, sorry, two lane road rather. And we're just gonna rock and roll, hitting all the same points that I just did with, uh, with that first road. Curve it around, freeform road tool, boom. Same thing, we can break this one off to the left. and also to the right. Don't forget to switch to curved road tool when you're not using a guide. Freeform is fine when you have guides, but otherwise wouldn't recommend it. Great, so now we can make this connection, or rather we have this measurement where this, where this side ends, and we can turn this original road backwards. This is the left turn coming from the highway in this direction. It's very confusing. I'll be looping the camera around. I'll try to, I'll try to keep you uh, informed what direction the camera is looped. Uh, this pillar is gonna prove to be in the way because these roads have to turn to the right. So how about this? Let's move all of the pillars to the middle by just drawing roads across in the center. Oh, two lane road can do its thing. So I'm gonna to choose to put a pillar in the center of each of these because that makes the most sense to me. Like move the pillars from the sides to the middle. Very easy. And coming across. And this road is backwards. <laughs> As I said earlier, this is a, it's deceptively simple. The, the idea of the double trumpet is very, very simple and elegant, but then when you actually go to do it, there's a lot of heights and a lot of curves that I've found. So this road is going to curve to the right, 7x7, seven seven, and we're going to ground it. The slopes will be fixed later. And the same road on this side is going to do the same thing. Now that we've moved that pillar out of the way, we can make our right hand turn, 7x7, seven seven, down to ground. So far we've done the left turns and the straight through traffic. Now it's time to solve the right turns. So all the, the right turns are gener uh, generally the easiest on any given interchange. In this case, I'm gonna turn off node snapping to, to make it happen. So what I'd really like to do is continue our motif of seven, seven unit radius turns. Ah, interesting. So seven unit radius turns for this means I'm gonna want it to end here, but minus seven. Um, so that means I'm gonna go 16 units. Your, your measurements will vary, but here's what I'm doing. I'm gonna go down to ground, starting at the end of our inter, uh, interchange, we're gonna go 16 units down to ground. And then I should be able to do a seven by seven curve here, if my math is correct and these two will wind up next to one another. Turn snapping back on, or uh, snap to node. There we go. So now these two roads can kind of 
get to know one another. I don't want to connect this one directly because it'll look pretty bad. But what I do want to do is go maybe five units up and then have them connect using the freeform road tool off the end of that one. I think that's a, that's a good way to do it. So that is our right turn coming from the southern direction based on this orientation. So that's pretty good. And I'll try to remember that I did a five unit curve there. I'll end up doing the same thing on the opposing side in just a moment. But let's do the right hand turn coming off the highway in this direction. Now, what options does this give us? I'm going to turn off snapping again. And I'm just going to work backwards. So seven units brings us right to where this road is going to come out. So ultimately, this road is going to serve the same purpose as this one as this one across the way. So I'm gonna do a five by five. All these numbers are, are different every time I do it, depending on the radius of, of this thing. So make sure to pay attention to your own numbers if you're following this <laughs> design. Don't get hung up on the numbers I'm using, unless you wanna replicate it exactly. And I'm gonna continue this road back. And how about this? For this one, I'm just gonna match this, I'm just going to match where this one comes out on the opposing side, just for aesthetic reasons. No, no functional reason whatsoever, just for, just for looks. So we'll match that. That's a seven unit thing. We're going to do the same trick. Freeform road off the end of this right turn and connect it at the end there, just so they end at the same place. Turn these backwards. Now this road... For aesthetic reasons, we're going to have the right turn coming off the highway follow these because I think it'll look nice. That's truly the only reason. It ends up being an 11 by 11 curve. That's fine. And then we'll have it end up where this one does. So that one becomes a 7 by 7 right hand turn. So I'm going to take everything I just did. That was a mouthful. I'm going to go make that happen on the other side and then we're going to connect the whole thing up. I gotta say, it's it's less of a trumpet and more of a French horn at this point, because we've got loops and valves and, and all kinds of shenanigan going on. <laughs> all manner of craziness. So, looking at the ends here, we have to figure out a solution for how these things are going to connect. I see three lanes going into the thing and three lanes coming out, which is great. The lane math is, is right on the money. Uh, I've decided that six units is probably a good distance to try to pull this off from. And I know I want four unit spacing. So I've selected these two, which are four units apart. So this this central single lane coming out and this dual, um, well, <laughs> dual two lane going in, I guess, now that I've set that precedent. So f six units away using guidelines. I'm just going to go 10 units back just to establish something. So the right highway will be incoming, the left highway will be outgoing, and I'm going to use connectors to get these done. So elevated two-lane road straight into the two-lane, and then the right turn can connect using our freeform road tool trick. Beautiful. That's one side. The other side is going to be the freeform road tool trick on all of these. So come off straight from each of the roads and then click the end point. This one will actually just be a, a straight road. And then freeform road tool trick for the last one, which was the left turn off the highway. And that looks great. I may have to do markings on these to make them make a bit more sense. But overall, that's exactly what we're looking for. For this side down here, I guess I'll have to see when the whole thing is completed how I like it. But the my gut is saying that we're going to use the freeform road tool trick and just go, I think, five units away. Yeah, we'll just do that five units away and connect it. The way that I got that measurement is simply by going five units down and then connecting to the highway. Now there's a nice node there. So now the freeform road tool trick becomes very easy. And there's going to be a lot of merging happening at that point, but that's, that's fine. We'll see the effects of that later. We'll see if it affects anything. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing on the opposing two sides. Now, there's a few housekeeping things that need to happen for me to be happy with this. Obviously, this is terrible and needs to be fixed, as well as 
potentially the removal of certain nodes or the movement of certain pillars and the sloping of things. I don't like this slope either. So let's address some stuff. This is, uh, this is messy. So let's take node controller, click on the node. Node controller renewal will automatically make some small changes to it, but we need to shift click each side to separate them a little bit. So if you shift click the the dot, click the node, shift click the, the dots on the edge, and you can align it with either side of the two lane highway. That'll space the connection out just a little bit. And then I'm gonna take move it and actually wiggle this just, a, just the tiniest little bit. If you hold control while using move it, it allows you to, to refine things ever so slightly. If I do that on, back, on the other side once again, oops, node controller, hold shift, click one of the sides, click the corresponding two lane highway side. Same thing on the other side, shift, click, click, and then use move it to nudge that ever so slightly so it uh, so that the textures aren't fighting and overlapping. Uh, what else? The slope of this, so I'm gonna use actually network multi-tool for this one instead of move it. Starting at the top here, we'll click that node and then maybe it slopes all the way down to here. So instead of, let's see, does it give me an amount? No. That's okay. Usually I can see the grade of these things. I may end up grounding a whole bunch of roads too. Like this road here looks like it could be safely grounded. Let me go around and make some decisions on the, oops, on the sloping and grounding of different, uh, different sections of road. And there you have it, the double trumpet, all dressed up. Looking pretty, maybe a little too pretty. All the plants are kind of impractical, but it's City Skylines, it's a game, so I figured I'd, I'd have a bit of fun and decorate the old, the old interchange up. Uh, things to note, I grounded as many roads as possible. Just like in real life, you want to have as many roads on the ground and not elevated as possible. The bridges much, must be bridged, of course. There are these minor roads and the major highway has to go underneath it. So these pieces must be grade separated. Uh, the rest of it, though, I, I wanted as much on the ground as possible. A little bit of sloping with network multi-tool. I flattened out the ground a bit using the terrain, the built-in terrain tool to the game, just smoothed things out a little bit. The whole thing is uh, eight meters high and zero. So the, the, main, <laughs> the main elevation is zero and it goes up to eight meters. And of course, a bit of intersection marking tool as well. You'll notice there's chevrons and lines drawn on all of these... Uh, on all, all of these connections. But overall, I'm very, very happy with how it came out. Um, thank you for sticking around. Thanks for hanging out and letting me build this interchange. As I said at the beginning, this is one of the, the more challenging ones that I've done because of, I think because of the versatility, there are so many different variables. The loops can go in different directions. The, the roads can cross at different, at different points. Uh, I finally settled upon this as a, as a, my representation of the double trumpet, my iteration of it. I'm very happy with the result. Everyone, thank you so much for hanging out. Um, feel free to catch a stream over on Twitch. Feel free to join the Discord. Definitely subscribe here if you like interchanges and tutorials and builds and all that kinds of stuff. Um, thank you so much for hanging out. I've been Yumble. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.